There we go. Okay, so we're live. Okay. Um, this is our main the dashboard when you first enter your array account. I'll step back and just go over how to log in. Uh, your URL up top is the pcsdpanthers.array.com. And anytime you want to log into the account from any computer, you just have to put that URL in and then slash login. And that'll take you to our login screen. And this is where the user with their password can sign in to the account to make changes. That, and we'll talk about where you can assign users and add sign-ins there. Uh, so when you do log in, you will come to the main dashboard. This is basically uh, an overview of what's going on on the account. On the right is a Chromebox. These are the devices that have been activated. It says offline. It will say online once you have it plugged in and running. And on the left, the latest viewers, these are the remote viewers, say on an iPad or on their computer, someone that's gone in and made changes. This will be come up and list the viewers as they appear. At the top of the array dashboard up here, on the drop down menu, we have our, this is how you get into many of the components of your signage. Mm -hmm. From uh, content, this is where the presentations are, your media library and your slideshow is for the drop down to, act, to get into those. Schedule is the schedule area, analytics, get to analytics, and then management. We'll start on the management and work our way back. Okay. Uh, in management, we have devices. Your Chromebox has already been loaded and ready to go, but this is where you'd add a new device if you came up with another screen you wanted to put in the school. And you enter the device name, you can name it lunchroom screen or if there's a display somewhere else, and then the code that comes up when you load up the Chromebox with array on it. You would hit the add device and then it would sync it all together at the bottom. Any questions in this area? Uh, now, I've got the documentation on how to add a device. I'm just assuming that's the same for any device I'd want to add. Yes, yeah. And we can always help uh, with the, that part of it, too. Uh, under users, this is where you'd add different users, access given accessibility and use, usage privileges. A new user, the top right, you click in. You put their name, it's assigned them an email, a password, a role. Admin at the bottom is the full rights role to do anything on the entire site, even changing uh, pay payments and things like that. Manager is more or less just using what's been predetermined and preset up without adding or changing, uh, say, widgets that cost money or getting into the payment side of things. And viewers, if you were to have the site locked down as a private, uh, display, you get viewer access so people can log in remotely. Right now your your display is public so anyone with the URL can view the site. Okay. Now when we create a user and they log in the first time, do they just constantly have that password that was set up or does it make them change their password at first login? The, the password here you enter will be their password. Okay. Yeah. The last part is active. We ha have this just to know that you've activated and made a new user, you have to click active and then add the user and then share this information with them. It will not send them an email. You'll have to share and, and let them know what their username and password is. Okay. And any time in here, you can disable them, delete them, and change them. Under channels, this is your, your main channel. Uh, you can purchase additional channels if you want different content on different screens. Uh, so that would be a whole other setup and area where you can, under your one account, you can then jump into different channels and, and configure and change those as necessary. For your sake right now, you just have the one channel and it shows you it's public. Now on the one channel, I can create different presentations, right? And then schedule those to show up on there at different dates. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So okay. that, that can change out as much as you want. It's just in the channel or ideas that you can have two different screens running two different things all the time. Okay. Under the account, this is some of the account settings. You can go in and fill in some of this. It has your 
email information, and invoices. We share invoices for you too. Okay. Next is analytics. Everything, since this is a touch screen, it's all recorded and comes in kind of like a website clicking buttons. So it's a great tool for you to kind of gauge how it's being used, how many times students are touching the screen. Uh, right now it shows 14 actual new visitors or viewers and that's from either us logging in at different times and clicking through or you and your screens there. And here you can see that there's just many different pages. And on, yesterday I was clicking through on the 23rd, you see the w widgets, and I was clicking and testing just to make sure everything was working as is. But you can just scroll through to find these. Uh, we had a hospital, not, not sure how many users they had, and we brought, and we brought this up for 10 or 12,000 viewers that year that actually went on their touch screen. Any questions about analytics? No. Nope. We also have viewers, depending on if you're sharing this with students, uh, we can, we can bring up wherever they are, whatever device they're on. And if you were to share it kind of in a newsletter, you can then gauge and see how many people actually visited the site. Schedule, this is where we talk, you talked about scheduling a presentation. This is done in, in a side window my schedules. The blue column recon, recognizes uh, the presentation currently running and it's just every day, all day. It started a year ago, ends in 10 months. That can be updated as you go through. But if you had a, a second presentation to run, you can so, uh, click in here and change the presentation. Right now I have the interactive running, so one of these test ones you did, we switch this and hit update all this, the screen will automatically update to that one and run that currently. If you wanted to add a new schedule, we can add a new schedule, new presentation, and then it would, it would play it in here and run it next or whenever that pops up and you'd see it in this calendar. Any questions about schedule? Uh, no. Okay. Pretty straightforward drag and drop once you have one set up. Uh, content. Now, well, I guess I do have one question, sorry. What would happen if you accidentally scheduled uh, one presentation at the same time another one's scheduled? I mean, is it going to just keep playing the one that was previously scheduled, or how does that work? I, be I believe so. The, the hierarchy in this window, the one that's been pro – probably pre-scheduled over top from before would continue without okay. stopping it and starting it. So you'd have to have a schedule where this one ends and then the next one starts and then this starts again. So you'd have to uh, get into this here. We can edit and say we do an end date and we pick a day and then on the next one we make sure we start it on the right day. When that okay. ends, then the, then the next one you got to start again after that. Okay. Okay, content. This is the area where most of the action happens for updating your site and how to get into different areas. Presentations, these are the, the what's been set up to play on your screen. Inside here we also have media library, which is also accessible from the present editor area, but you can also access the media library in here. It will just bring up all your media and let you scroll or delete from here and add new media. And slideshow, we'll cover this before we get into the presentation. This is uh, where a lot of the updating and edits will happen for you. In the slideshow, this is the folder where images and content is stored for the widgets, like a slideshow that's in one of those presentations. It comes here and talks to this folder and pulls anything in this folder to populate that widget on the screen. So right now in the 2010s, I put the, the, the one page, we have our 10 potential class photos and this is where you would update your class photos okay. by adding a slide you can either add the media from your desktop or computer or storage area and then add the slide to the folder 
within this folder too, we can delete. And we'll just do an add slide. If we had loaded a slide already from our desktop, it would pop up. It'll come up in order, so as soon as you put in it, the latest one will populate at the top. Uh, you click on that, say, if this is one we want to add, and go add slide, and then I'll put it up front. Once we're in the slideshow, say that was 2012, and we had 2010 already, 2011, we move it into the right spot. And then now we have the correct order. Okay. So it be left to right for the order. So any questions about the slideshow folder or the activity in here? Nope. Okay. And again, this will grow and grow with folders as you create more and more pages and slideshows. So it would be important to name these for any new user or new someone that's new to editing this so they'll know what the folder name is, where it's located. So I have class of 2010s. This is a 2010-2019 class photos. So you have you may have 20, 2010 sports, and that can be different sport photos in, in, a new, in a new folder if that's what we ended up having there. Okay. Um, on the home page, these are the revolving photos that are flipping on the home page, those six sections. And so to update the home page, again, simply you wouldn't get into the home page editor, you would just come into this slideshow yeah, folder. This has been playing for too long. You want to remove this photo, we would remove it and it's updated on the slideshow. Um, okay. Some new, new images or new content, new messages. And it's just updated on the fly then. So as soon as I remove a folder or a photo and add one, it would show up on the screen then? Yeah, yeah, it's instant for us here. We wanted to take, take away any extra steps to go back in and hit push it live. So, so this is live when you're moving things around in here. It is pretty current and live to what's going on on the screen. When this okay. moves like this, it should be happening on the screen. This point to this point is more 96 inches. This is like so this is the content area uh, for slideshows. Listees is a widget which you will not have on your site or be using it. It controls Excel, big spreadsheets, uh, donor listings. It helps manage into multiple pages of content to like an Excel type format on your screens. We will now jump to the actual presentations. So in here, you can create as many presentations and design them. However, maybe there's a special event coming up. You just want your screen to display that and create that in here by adding a new presentation. We can name the presentation. Uh, Say home coming resolution. We can keep pretty standard. It's landscape, or we can do portrait for your display. It's landscape, obviously. We create, and now we have a homecoming presentation, which we can then get into and edit by the actions. And this takes you into the editor. It'll be a blank screen. Now I had created a test one and I was having issues adding extra pages to, you know, you hit a link and it would take you to another page. Um, yes. And I was told that that was, you could only do one right now, but in, the, in a newer update, we would be able to do multiple presentations with multiple pages inside of them. Is that coming soon or? In this sense, yes. Uh, so you're looking to have on the screen, the whole screen flips and changes to a, a new screen where, of content. That's what you're envisioning. Yeah, like I think I created that yeah. test that test one there, and I had uh, a link on the side to, uh, I believe, do like uh, class photos or whatever. And I wanted to hit that class photos link, and it take me to another page with the hierarchy of of the graduation years. And then you would hit that and go into that folder. Uh, is that coming to where I can do that to multiple presentations? And I, I couldn't do that because we could only have one presentation that had multiple pages. Yeah, you no, know, that part of the interactive is current and live, uh, which I'll get into and show you how that happens. That's the touchscreen type interactive area. Yeah. Uh, 
I will jump into uh, the interactive page here, and this is what I've set up, and we can go over where that's active and how that's working. So, so I'll, I'll just delete the homecoming. Okay, but I mean, that's happening on the presentation you created, but I couldn't do that on the presentation I created because you were already using that feature, and I'm guessing we can't do that on multiple presentations linked to multiple pages. That making sense? He possibly for the interactive part of it, that could be the case. So I'll have to double check it, but I okay. I wasn't aware that it. Our, the new feature coming up is, is say you had a whole page of content saying uh, graduation is on the 25th and you had a picture of some graduates. And then you wanted to flip to a weather widget with this new slideshow. You, you could potentially do that. The way your site's set up though is currently we have a touch interactive with touch points with, into multiple pages. So yeah, there would be a, that would be how you want to keep it because the way the other system works, it wouldn't be compatible the two together. So it's one or the other. It's kind of the idea behind it. You, we can do a second channel to handle that, but I think what you're after, we can handle the interactive side of it here. I'll show you how it happens. Everything is built up in this multiple page after page, and it should be doing everything you want here. Right. So in, in the interactive, we'll jump to this. This is the, what I've set up for the template that you've seen. So to get into that presentation, uh, this will take us to the editor. We go to edit. On screen, it's what you see is what you get. Uh, so this is what's live on the screens. And within here, I've created, we'll just go through. These are the five or six slideshows revolving on the, in the main section. And those are those home slide one, home slide two, home slide three, home slide four, home slide five, and home slide six. So any image we put into there, back in that content folder, would populate into these. Okay. We have the weather or the time up top, and up top I have the the headline slideshow plane. This is uh, white text on a transparent background, saved out as an image, and then loaded in. To add or update this, uh, someone would have to be able to have a program like Photoshop or Illustrator to type in new white text with it and save it out with a transparent background and bring it into the slideshow as a as an image. The slideshows act as a content handler. You can't create you cannot create content inside a slideshow or type in new text. The slideshow just plays images or videos. So, so they've got to be. So I'm assuming the images have to be a GIF image then. A PNG for the for a GIF would be fine too. PNG okay. uh, has a bit better quality. In these flipping slideshows, if there was a video, we, we can also play a video within this. So this could revolve in the center if you had a, a, a latest championship winning shot or something, you can play it and have it on your screen come up with inside uh, Z's playthrough. At the bottom, I've turned uh, some navigation here, I, and this is maybe something we can discuss if this is current and this is you know meets all your goals for the signage. The idea would be these would be touch points that take you to the next page and right. give you uh, content in that area. Class history, I, I have created that as a touch point, and this box around the top is the touch point, and where you're talking about pages. I've started creating pages within here. And so this will this is how you would navigate to a page. Currently I have it as someone touches on the class history, it will jump them right to the 2010s, the current one, and take okay. them to this page. And you can edit and change on all this page and jump through the pages. And so I'm just jumping kind of quickly ahead to your idea of, is this what you were hoping was going to happen or did you right. see this working? Right. So the 2010 yeah. is the, that where it says 2010s, that's actually an image on a transparent background put on top of that. Is that what that this was? Is a, this is a, but, a button. Uh, what it is, it's a touch button. Okay. What I've done is, uh, and I, I want to run through all these parts for you and, and we'll get back to the details in, into it if you want to okay. 
five minutes, and then I'll show you how the touch points kind of will uh, current to your content. So let me just jump back. I just wanted to show you how I was doing this. So we'll jump back to the home page. When you come to a site, it'll, it'll launch the home page, and this is where you set up everything. At the top, we have the navigation to do uh, a lot of the widgets. Whenever you touch an object, you will get a, a toolbar in the bottom right corner, and that's how you can do some edit content. And at the very bottom of the screen, there's also some cut and paste kind of tools used for typical design programs. At the top, this is where you add new text, new content. If we were to say wanting to add a text field, we click text, a text field comes up, and everything is adjustable, ed editable, and double click to get into text and type in school news. It's kind of how we did the bottom section. Okay. And up here, we play with fonts, text size, gives you all kind of all the, all the things you can be doing. To your text. We're going to highlight to do some bold to it, crease it, and say we wanted the new news to look like that, we can place it in and delete what's behind. Within any text box, we can also get into the editing through the feature and add borders and shadows and animate and a few different advanced features. What I'll get to that when we get like some, to some boxes. So we'll delete this text. Up top, images and video. So this is where we just add an image to the screen, say a background or the, your logo. We would navigate or add media. If you add media at the top right, you can navigate through your computer, through Facebook, Instagram, if you have pages out there and have accounts linked with the site to bring in images. We can also search for images. In this case, we'll just jump back to the editor where we have, say, your school logo, the Panther. We click on it, hit insert, and the Panther image will come up on screen. Everything is adjustable by the boxes, to size and scaling, and we'd get it in location and as is. This is the same for video. If you loaded a video, you can bring in a video feature. I don't think we have any video here. And then the same idea, you adjust and scale the video into. It's under drawing, in some of these boxes in the corners, like everything is built in your site. I will show in the bottom right hand corner here, it's a red box. Best. How I've done that is I just take a rectangle, make a rectangle. Inside it, the widget styles, you can add shadow, and blur, color. So right now we're at the top, it has all your tabs down. The background color, you can pick a red. We can also make it transparent, opacity, so we want it to kind of show through. It's just showing you step by step, shows through. We wanted rounded corners, say, if you Add a border, you can add a radius, border style, say dotted, width, so we have a corner, width, and the color is white. So there's some elements of design that can be applying to pieces. And I'll leave that there. Just jumping ahead, if we were to say draw a second box, we wanted to match that. We have at the tool bottom of the toolbar, the neat feature is. We can copy this and paste it and create a new one. Or we can simply select on it and copy the style and apply that style to a box, which comes in handy if you create a bunch of text boxes on your screen and wanted them all to have the same font and size. That, same, that can apply the style and font and sizing to everything, so you can start doing some quick editing. At the top, the last part is widgets. 
Inside here is the actual widgets you can bring into a page. In the top right corner of our page currently have the uh, date and a time, which would be the, was the first one down. So we can do, pick our format we like. For how I've done this one, I just did the date first, or we can have date and time together, which you wouldn't probably get into this, but it's simply clicking the format you like. It comes up on the screen. And again, once it's on the screen, you style it by changing some font sizes. And now we have we can create a new font, we can change the color, and everything again is stylized. We can do this to almost any widget we bring in, changing fonts and colors, and depending on the license of different screens you create. Other widget, we do have marquee. Marquee's the scrolling message that comes across screens. If there was an important announcement, we could add that to a page. Say we want to type in homecoming 2017, direction speed. And so we have that. Again, we can stylize, say, font size. Maybe we wanted a, a little bit of background color. Yeah. And kind of put it in this in the location. Countdown's an interesting one for schools. Just running down our widgets here. Countdown, we can have an event, say back to our homecoming. We want we know the event date is say January 31st, the text before homecoming, homecoming in, and then we just want, we at the bottom here in units, we can start subtracting what we want it to say up top. So the first part up when they typed in here homecoming at the top in the preview, you can see it says homecoming in six days, 14 hours, and 16 minutes. We want to take off minutes, we deselect that homecoming in six days, 14 hours. Bonus. And then we have a complete message on that day. You say, I don't know, homecoming today or whatever the, the final, final piece is. Hit OK. Now we have this countdown. So every day, every hour, it's going to change. So these are some different tools you can apply to your signage within pages and add events or say there was school news or one of these activities calendar or big activity or event is coming up, you can put these type of pieces into it. It would look dynamic or active. Any questions so far? No, uh, nope. Okay. Next would be slideshow, which we've used a lot inside here. What I'll do is I'll just kind of create this, uh, delete this main center slideshow. This is a piece of the floor. So as you design or develop, we will add a slideshow. We want that slideshow right in the center. We click the slideshow widget. We've created those folders in that previous area under slideshows. And what this slideshow dropdown does is link to that one of those folders. This would be home page three. We have one in the top left, two is the bottom left, three is the middle one. Within a, any slideshow we can do our transitions. This is a vertical flip transition in the middle. Actually it's horizontal. horizontal flip. But they can be slides, we can do fade outs, and we can do shuffle which is kind of a random piece to it. On the home page we're using this flip horizontal Transitions in milliseconds, so 500 milliseconds is five seconds. That's between each flip, how fast that flip is happening. On the home page, I'm pretty sure I did 1,000. And display time is how long the actual image is up and being viewed for. So if you want it to stay on the screen longer, shorter, 
on the home page here, the main one I did seven seconds, so it's the one that's revolving most. Some of these others that are timed out to 15 seconds. It's kind of just a random choice to see how they play, so they all not flipping at the same time on the home page. We have options here, and all the slides will fit and fill. Fiddle, scale the image to one of the sides. As soon as it's, it's scaled up to hit one of the side borders, left to right or top to bottom, will stop scaling. It will leave room on the top and bottom or left to right if it doesn't proportionally fill up the space. If we hit fill, it'll zoom in on the picture until all the edges are filled up. And for the home page, I've used fill to help the design and look complete. We can activate swipe, which we'll use on the slideshows within the, the class photo so people can swipe through them. You can add gallery, which will then show you on the class photos where that happens, on, which is a, below the slideshow. It'll give you the list of other slides within there, and people can click and move through those that way. For this instance, the home page will have that off. Everything looks good. We'll hit OK. It'll bring the slideshow in. Like any other object, the slideshow is movable, editable, you can arrange it, and we'll put it into position. Any questions on the slideshows? So how do you stack those? Because like the Panther image is now underneath that presentation. How do you stack that over the top of that corner of the presentation? Okay. Yeah, and that'll, that's kind of the part of the page edit, editing at the bottom of all, our, of all pages, the navigation should come up. And this is within layers. So every, every one of these objects or pieces of parts on a page you bring in, it'll bring in a, at that point in time and put it on that level. So if you've done these five pictures before, this is the sixth one. It's on the top of all those. If you want to get them behind, we have a, a layers widget. At the bottom of our screen, this, these lines, these three lines resemble layers. And I'll just jump into them and show you. These are all the pieces and parts on the page and where they are respectively order, in order. I just added the last slideshow 24. At the bottom is the most front and the top is the, like the first thing you added, so it's at behind. And so right now the slideshow's in front of everything. One way to handle the adjusting of slideshows is we can lock each image, we can delete each image, or show each image. So if you couldn't find where this piece is, we can sh show it. If you didn't want to move or adjust where this image was, we can lock it down. We back out and we select the image within here we have these arrows, move to the bottom, move up one layer, move down one layer, move to the top. We'll just, because of, and how deep and developed each page gets, there, there's lots of layers in here. Mm -hmm. We'll send it to the very bottom just to show you. So I've sent it to the very back. Okay. Looks like there was a layer there. At the very back, the one step above it, I have a, an image, a color over the whole piece. I select that color, now you can see the whole background image just needs to be sent to the back again. And now this image is right in front of the background image. It's the furthest back now. We'll see image 24, probably somewhere in touch or slideshow 24. Or it must have been slideshow. Three. So it's one of these slideshows. It's probably slideshow one because I just did it. Right. So that's where it sits now in location. Again, all these are. So part of it is balancing the order when you bring things in a new piece of part, getting it in the right location on the layers. Under widgets, other things, we have an RSS feed. I'm not sure about your school news if you had it on a website or widget on your website or an RSS feed, like a news feed or something out there. You can 
incorporate those into the site and have that URL link and see how it works. They come in as a could scroll across the screen if it was school news that you were already doing or if you're pulling from other news content. It gives you options for that. Right now we don't here's just a generic I think we're CNN. You can see how that just pulls in. There's some free ones out there. There's also some paid ones. Okay. So it's just pulling in a RSS feed. In Medley and website, this is, you can pull part of a website to display within this. So if there was a section on your website you wanted to have show, it gives limited navigation depending on how each set website is encoded or program it works differently. Uh, we can, what's your website? Maybe we'll just test and see how it comes up. Uh, www.peakincsd.org. Yeah, it looks, maybe it's, yeah, that did not, could be how it's, it's called the URL, right? It's P-E-K-I-N-S-D, D as in dog, yeah. org. So it, it's saying it requires iframe embed, which your site may not have. Other pages in the site may have it. Okay. It matter of testing it. See, it should preview up for us. But it, this is mainly meant for, there's a lot of sites out there now that you can, it's a touch read, there's solitaire. You can, there's sites that it's just a solitaire game that can come, can come up and have a solitaire game play like through a website. recommended just to post a website because websites have to scroll and do things right and they have a lot of uh, back and forth talking and things going on with ran into issues where content was constantly loading and, um, and doing things and then it was slowing up the performance of your actual presentation again we can help answer if you had a question if you wanted to use the website or part of one we can see what was available Listies, either a premium widget, which you, additional fees and paying for listies, weather, QR code, and Google Calendar. Google Calendar is interesting. If you are using Google Calendar, you can link it to a, a calendar that comes up inside a page, and it will pull from that calendar. So whenever you're changing a Google Calendar, it updates to this slide or to the area on your presentation and can it be a way to show a calendar of events. Is that a free uh, widget? That's a, that's a premium widget. Is it? How much does it cost for the widgets? Do you use Google Calendar? Yeah. Is this school, uh, do they, do they have, does it have an active uh, calendar then for uh, of events or how do they organize that? I them? think we have one, but I, but you say it's premium. Does that mean we have to pay for it? Yeah, it's half price off. Uh, the calendar's a five dollar a month extra. Okay. So two fifty, two dollars fifty cents a month. Okay. Premium. And we can help sync that up, and it it does work nice for that event if. Some schools have their own RSS feed or their feed for calendars mm -hmm. and that sense. So you, if it's already being fed to a website, a lot of it's a dynamic content. Again, how's that content being created? You, you don't want to have to recreate things two or three times. It's already been done by someone. Is there an easy way to sync it or to, to make it come live? And that's part of the, what these other bottom menus that we haven't got into of what those become or what, what's inside those pages. I wasn't sure of the content that's going to be happening on those pages. Okay. So here, any, any questions about the other widgets? Uh, I, I don't think so. 
And weather could be something you can have up there if you decide to. It's, it's an easy widget. Uh, you put in your location, it's either it's fixed as the best way. You can put in your area code and your current conditions, and it could come up and display your wet weather. So that covers kind of the, getting the widgets, the content, the top toolbar section. The next thing I'm going to get into is the last part on the end here is the touch points and creating these pages that you talked about. On this home page, you potentially have five touch points along the bottom school news, student handbook, meal menu, activity calendar, and class history. And I believe this is where you thought about they click on here and it takes them to another page. Correct. So school news right now, I've typed in school news. We don't have an active link since that page is currently complete. The other thing is we can hide this or delete it for now if that wasn't complete. But say you did have school news going and wanted to make it a touch point there. In the top left corner, you hit the touch point. A dialog box comes up. Destination page, you can either add the new page. I believe I've already gone in and have school news as a page, a blank page. That This means this is where it's going to take you. You can put text over there and name it. Buttons are ideally made they are designed for a, a one line type of treatment because I've stacked this in the layout of your home page. We will delete and have no text come up, so it'd be a blank box. I'll show you how that's used compared to center of the page. The blank box, everything always comes up in the center because it's blank, it's hard to find. It's just kind of a use case scenario. This box now is the touch point, so you see the dotted line. Wherever I put this box, that became, if I put it across the whole screen, if someone touches on the screen anywhere there, it'll take them to the school news page. Yeah. So we want to just draw it around the kind of the area we want to become a touch point. And the key for touch points is it has to be on top. If you put an image on top of this, it'll kind of deactivate because the image is on top. So again, the layers and making sure the touch point is on top is key. If you weren't sure, you can click in, the, in this menu and say bring to the top. Now we know that, that touch point is right there in that green box. Where that takes you and how you edit that school news page is on that bottom bar again, this navigation for the page. We have this main section with the add page, home, and arrow. Home is our current page we have. We want to jump and work on the school news page. We click on the school news page and it takes us to our blank page. We can begin setting up that page. The background image that we've been using is this black and white background image. We found our image, it could be any image you have, it could say advance or find an image you want for that page and set the background. And so we're starting to build this events page. If you've liked kind of navigation from previous pages, you can also go back to the home page and we can start selecting multiple pieces of parts. And we're gonna use the bottom toolbar are you selecting the multiple parts? Are you holding the control key or something? Yeah, the shift key. So I'm okay. shifting and selecting. I've kind of okay. selected those parts. I'm going to, again, at the bottom is kind of our page interaction. We're going to copy everything. We can then jump to school news and let's paste it. Hmm, okay. And so it's kind of developed your template. You get to student handbook with your know, miss school news part. Let's see. I think we put behind here again it's behind so we're gonna copy copy that. So once you set up your templates and just jumping back and forth school news copy that paste the school news there. And so we're developing up here in this window now, maybe that you just wanted a full, 
you can divide your page up. It's kind of an open format. We can have, say, a new slideshow. And I'm going to just jump down to your bond info. That's that slideshow you initially set up. Maybe we'll just do a fade in on this one. Transition speed a little faster since the best. Hit OK. And now that those pages you lo loaded can be brought in. And it should cycle through. Uh, And I, so I wasn't sure your content or everything you wanted for school news or if there's right. photos here, you could have event photos, make a slideshow called school news events. And then in that photo folder, you can put the latest events. If someone's at the event with their phone taking photos, it can be saved to a folder and you just load those photos into the slideshow Who's folder. That? Who's that? So this, these these pages at the bottom would still have to be sorted out for content, but that would be how you get into them. Where you've the main content for this, uh, we'll go back to home pages. Is this class history section, and when someone clicks on that class history, we have the button here, any area there, it'll take them to the most current ones with the idea of navigations that I thought would work, and that would be the twenty tens class. And so right away when they click on here, class photos is up, 2010s is active. I have a touch point over these to take them to the 1990s and 2000s, so these would have to get populated. And then in here would be your most current class photos, 2016 maybe. The next part of navigation on the 2010s, I wasn't sure if you wanted to have awards, championships, events. These could be another folder where they would, another page that links like a touch point called 2010 awards. And then another slideshow is set up with populated photos. Now can those slideshows be set up to where like, like it is now, but they would touch on the image below that they want to see? Yeah, this right now is set up for that. Okay. Is it clicking through for you? Okay, yep. Yeah, it's also when on your screen, they should be able to uh, do I don't have it on my computer, but on a touch screen, they should be able to swipe this. Okay. And swipe through. So that would give them their navigation, so they could yeah jump around for for that quick view. Again, your content is you, right now. You have football photos, you know, cheer photos. Some you know, looks like theater department. You know, where do those get placed and what folders, that's kind of the organization of it to be sorted out. Does that handle your content on these pages, the way this is set up? Yeah. Okay. So ideally when they come to this page, the class photos is the, is the first thing they can get through and then they can jump to these awards, challenges, and events. Then if they want to go to 2000s, they would click here, which I've already activated, and it would take them to the 2000s, which I've kind of set up. So it shows, you see how it changed the, now it's 2000s, 2000s typed in. So these, on every page, you can change this as you work your way up in 1980s. I'm going to go into type 1980s and copy all this and paste it on a new page. I've even See, the 1980s is blank currently, but I have designated pages for that already. So part of the activity and the design, the setting up these these pages is probably the most work at the beginning, something uh, someone that's familiar with Array would do, but for the once they're set up, the content and parts would all happen in those slideshow folders once these are sorted out. Is, the one question in 2010s is class achievements. Is that the correct wording? Do you like having awards here? Would that be like a championship football team? Uh, maybe there's a, a speech team that wants state. That's kind of kind of a, getting an idea of where you would be assigning some of these photos you've talked about. Okay. 
championships, events, and there's some big events for that year, you can pop, start populating them in here that way. So again, back at backing out, we would have this currently set up. Right now, this, this slide shows the 2010's class photos. You would have also make a second page, that would be 2010 awards, copy this whole page, and then instead of class photos folder, we would create a widget. Say we already started it, or we can start a folder called 20, 2010's awards. Create 2010 awards. Do our same transition if you like that transition. Have the gallery. This is that tool, the gallery on or off. So you want to hit the gallery on for this instance. That, this is at the bottom, the thumbnail. So it's gallery. Okay. That's how you have that. Scaling will leave it fit for this instance. We don't want to start zooming in because that tends to if you have a square photo and a horizontal space to start cropping ends, maybe someone will get cut off. So for this instance, we'll just leave fit on and we'll have the swipe activated. What's the captions do? It gives you the ability to put a caption on a photo, but it's not, it kind of, with the thumbnails, it interacts without doing that. It's more for a simple slideshow. You can then add a caption on the image, and as it's scrolling through a slideshow, it'll put a caption at the bottom of it, on the top. Okay. Right now, the, the thumbnail kind of oversees that and puts the thumbnail in its place. So it's okay. a, either, either or, I think we're developing a next version to solve that. What we can do in the slideshow, you can see, we can add, so that's how we would say do the slideshow and come in, and the slideshow, I'll just, and you can put as many slideshows as you want on the screen. So if there was images in there, this images would populate and you'd draw it in, in the new space and so get a rewards page. Any questions about how to do these pages? Again, these pages are built with actual images and parts within Array, so it's all manipulated. It can be moved around, layered. Say, so again, we would select some areas And we can bring them into the other pages. Say we have that. That when we start two thousands. Almost done. And we paste it in. So yeah, it's about one thing we could in content wise we discussed what you wanted to start in the twenty tens and work your way back, I believe, correct? Right. So in this instance, if, if you didn't have want these active yet, we can simply delete them if they weren't completed. Okay. And so for the start of it, if you had twenty tens and had your work your way back. 15, 14, 13 class photos and put some awards in, this page would just would not have the link. So right. I come to this main page from the home page. And when you see that once you get the 29s done, you would just come in here, add the touch point for class of 29s or, or 2000s or take them to class 2000s. And in this instance, we actually type in the in the button name. You'll see it'll come up on screen and we move it into location. And this is the actual button. So anytime they touch around this whole area, if you make it this large and leave the box here, that would be the touch point. We want to kind of isolate it and move it into location. So you just did that one by adding a touch point? Yeah, and just typed in because the it's a single name and wasn't stacked. It was kind of a style issue on the home page. Okay. Buttons are. I, for, for one single line of copy is how they work. 
again if we were to do the Okay. And then if you just wanted the transparent, you would just leave the text blank? Yeah, we put the blank in. Okay. And moving in, we kind of get back. How I did those other ones before is I just tinted them out to make it so when you're on the page, it's bold. Kind of a it transparent, so what's high so in the 2010s, you see the 2010s. A quick one is copy style again, apply it to the button, and now it added. So it's a quick feature down the bottom, copy style, and I applied it to any any other button on the screen that I touch. It kind of gets us back to where we were. Any questions about usability or editing or creating? Well, uh, inside the, I mean, well, I got it pulled up here. Inside of the media, is there any way to create folders to put that and organize it a little easier, or do we just have to make sure we name maybe by year at the front so we can sort by name and kind of organize those? Is yeah, there, in the current in the current version, there's no. Uh, organization we do have a uh, in our lighthouse in a version to be seen it would be a way to organize your okay. content into folders but right now it is kind of this typical gallery uh, fill in how does it organize in there is it just by the order that they're in uploaded into it or does it sort by name or correct it is by order that you have most current to oldest. Okay. Okay. So it would be key when someone's creating these folders to name them class of 2000, class of 2011, and, right. and try to keep them organized and bring them in. But once they're, the other part of it is you can also, if you were just doing the class photos, is you would you wouldn't really be in that media gallery in the sense of where that's loaded. We would actually be in. Uh, I'll, inside the slideshow folder so they should be making sure they're putting the 2010s in that folder okay so, so they would up in the top right you can always we can access the gallery at, inside the editor inside this yeah. folder here and add their media and it, that same you can see all these same photos are inside here so right. they would then go and add the media and once they're once they add it it actually pre-populates in here automatically the five or six they add, but okay. they would also want to name them so that you can see that they are named correctly and they come in and they keep them organized that way. One thing I'll just jump back into the presentation. I, I edited it out, didn't save all our changes and moving things around like we did. But uh, the last part of editing and changing is is the saving and page settings in the top right hand corner here. I'll just cover this. In all our pages, we have page settings within here we can put a background and then all the pages to have a black background or, or your red and you can type in your value or select colors we can also select an image from the background that's where i was jumping around all the backgrounds currently have this background image the, the paper one black mm -hmm. and white and then, so they're all kind of applied anyways. And that's kind of a, will be applied to that page when you come in there. And text color too, we can default right now. It's just, a, it's, it comes in as black on the screen and the font, so you, which we've left as is. But in the top right, the other part is this push live. This is the actual area where you, it's kind of like save. Once you hit push live, it will, send it to all the screens if you're making changes and your content's halfway done you would not want to push live those are all the display will push live but it, you can save a draft at the bottom right so you can save a draft and come back and finish it later 
so is there two copies of this presentation then inside of the presentations folder like the the live one and then the edited one or the draft no it's kind of we're inside the one you've done and what we have is the save and save as so you save a draft and then when you come back and open it it'll open it it'll ask you if you want it to work in your draft or the most current version that you okay enter your draft it, it is key if you're doing a lot of changes, a lot of pages jumping around. It is convenient to save more often than not because of the web-based and the, the live and not live to keep your current changes. Sometimes you can lose things or like any program, so we do recommend saving a draft as you move through your pages. Okay. If it's because of content and dynamic and how it's pulling, from different areas you have slideshows and say feeds coming in if things start to not appear quite correctly on your editor a good thing would be to save a draft close it back out and come back into it to almost like a refresh or you can refresh on the screen but you want to save save the draft first and that's sometimes due to internet quality and how things are being because we're coming off the the web so it depends on how content is coming in and how it's been handling so there's some steps in there to, to refresh that can help bring things back to to normal and also the slideshows may not always populate but on the screen they, they should appear and reconfigure reload once they're pushed okay so when you're jumping through here you kind of see some of those things happening you know, why did you just other than that, I think that covers a lot of the tools and parts and how to get into here. Uh, and initially, I think once someone is in doing these initial page, let's say the 2010s and, and what's happening and getting this down, then we can apply everything to the other pages and that'll make it a lot easier once we finalize one of these decades. Now, I just thought of this, I haven't tested it yet, but how is the calibration of the panel done? Because it, it's set to load right up to this page, the kiosk. How, are the, how, do, how does it function with the touch points then? How is the calibration of the panel done? I guess you your, your screen and knowing the touch point is in that current location. Right. Because I know now, some... Sometimes you have to recalibrate by launching the Active Manager, which is part of the Promethean software. Okay. Yeah, the calibration of the touch points would be the responsibility yeah, to make sure that that is correct for the screen and, and those touch points are triggered at that point. How is that then, done, though, since it automatically launches into a kiosk and doesn't allow you to use any of the other programs? Uh. I would have to talk with IT, and there's, I'm pretty sure, a way to get back out and go back in. Okay. There's some key commands when you boot up and start up that would allow you to do that if that has to be done. The okay. calibration of the touch points. Okay. I've seen them do the calibrations here and then go back into the management side of it. Is this screen, is it needs to be calibrated, you think, or is it? I, I think it does. I mean, I'll get out there and mess with it today and see exactly what I need to do. I, I think generally you have to start off with the calibration, but maybe we won't have to. Yeah, get tested, or you said the box is in a, is the box attached to it yet? I had it attached, but I unplugged it. Okay. The, I, I just had it plugged into a test panel that's on wheels right now. I don't have it plugged into the actual one mounted on the wall. Okay. But I can, we, I can mess with it a little bit today. Yeah, and we could help assist too if you needed that. Okay. Which, which step to take or go from there. Okay. So that's Araya, that's the editor, that's your, your presentation. We can um, help answer questions if you need it down the road or with some emails or show you, share this tutorial back with you. The 
the content, does that make sense for the folders and that's where it all happens? And right, yes. The slideshow. So, so the biggest part is getting these other pages set up. And a lot of times it's not really going back in the editor and, and having to rem remember how to style and move things around on layers. Once those are kind of completed, it's all the action is going to happen in those folders where the slideshows are. Yeah, that's that. So eventually, there could be a lot more folders once we have everything populating and going back to the '60s. And the '60s, there can be three or four folders for sports or uh, awards or events that we talked about. Okay. So moving forward. Uh, First, would be getting your screen up and live with the touch points working. Right. And probably the first decade, I would assume, to kind of cause straight on. Again, we can get in there if you didn't have the other events. We can start with just the class photos on this left hand column mm -hmm. and leave your achievements. Maybe it's just a list here that you can, if you didn't have photos quite yet, you can put like. 2010 football champions or speech debate recognize you know and have a list here so it gives you some options okay okay well if you don't have any questions I'll end the broadcast and share it with you and just follow up on next steps Okay. All right. Okay, great. Well, in the broadcast, I think you're still there.